Welcome to the Pennine Acute Hospitals NHS Trust Chief Executive's Annual Review for the year 2013-2014. For the first time, we're using a video to supplement our annual report and quality account report. We will show you how we have performed against a range of key national and local clinical standards and targets. We also highlight some of our key achievements and service developments in the past financial year. Since taking up the post as Chief Executive in April 2014, I have had the opportunity to meet and work with many of our staff across our hospital sites and those who work in the community to learn how our services are delivered and to hear about staff hopes, expectations and ambitions for these services for the future. I hope this film, alongside our annual report and the Associated Quality Accounts report, will capture this work and show the immense amount of care, compassion, skill and professionalism delivered every day by our 9,000 dedicated staff. Our staff have continued to work hard over the last 12 months in delivering high standards of health care, meeting not only important performance standards, but achieving excellent outcomes and experience for our patients and their families. We have seen a significant reduction in our hospital standardised mortality, so that we now have the second lowest rate in the northwest of England. This level of performance means that statistically 20% fewer patients than expected died in our hospitals in 2013-2014. We have also exceeded the stretch target which we set ourselves to reduce the number of patients infected with Clostridium difficile in our hospitals. These are both critical patient safety improvements. And, following our investment in 100 additional nursing staff on our wards, and the release of ward sisters to become fully site supervisory, therefore spending less time doing paperwork in offices and more time on their wards, we expect further improvements in the coming 12 months. Another major success during the year was the consistent delivery in meeting the national four-hour emergency care access standard as a trust and increasingly on a site-by-site -site basis in our three A&E departments and urgent care centre. In 2013 and 14, particularly during the winter months, we were one of only two trusts in Greater Manchester to consistently achieve this important target. As always, some areas of performance have proved challenging. While we met our 18-week referral to treatment target for patients undergoing surgery at our hospitals for the year as a whole, we missed the final quarter of the year as a result of changes made to ensure that we can provide as many episodes of care as possible closer to patients' homes within our own hospitals rather than referring patients further afield. In addition, we were pleased to achieve our cancer targets throughout the year with the exception of the final month. This year we are working hard to ensure that we consistently meet all of our cancer targets every month. Like other NHS trusts across the country, we are not immune to the challenge facing the NHS and other public sector organisations in finding efficiencies and ensuring that our services are financially sustainable for the future. By keeping tight control of our budgets and achieving £20 million worth of cost savings, we managed to break even in 2013-2014. However, we still have significant underlying financial issues to tackle and we must not underestimate how difficult it will be to address this challenge. We will therefore continue to develop more cost savings during 2014-15 while recognising that quality and safety must be our priorities. To address this financial challenge, we are clear that we must continue to find ways to work differently and further transform the way we provide services to improve efficiency and cut waste, which will improve patient care and service delivery. We are also clear that we must continue to innovate and develop our services. In 2013-14, we were proud to deliver many excellent service developments. These included the development and opening of our new OASIS Medical Dementia Unit at Rochdale Infirmary, which works closely with the Clinical Assessment Unit. The successful launch of our new Integrated Community Diabetes Service in Oldham, which has been developed in partnership with the CCG and Pennine Care. The refurbishment of our Medical Ward 21 at Fairfield Hospital. The development of a family waiting room and dedicated children's area at Rochdale Urgent Care Centre the centralisation of acute stroke services to our primary stroke unit at Fairfield, the continuing refurbishment and expansion of our A&E departments at both Oldham and Fairfield. 
These are just some of our developments during 2013-14. But who better to bring our achievements to life than the people who provide the services? I will now hand you over to some of our staff to tell you more. Major achievements this year have been involved in the OASIS unit. It was a unit that was purpose-built for patients who live with dementia but who have a medical reason and a need to be in hospital, for example, a chest infection. We work in close partnership with the CCG and also with Pennine Care and we have the mental health nurses that are specialised in looking after patients with dementia that are based on the unit as well as Pennine Acute Zone nurses. Over the past two years, we've implemented the electronic patient um, prescribing and medicines administration system. One of the largest rollouts, in fact, in the world. I'm on Ward F7 at the Royal London Hospital. This is a very busy respiratory and general ward. EPMA has improved patient care and safety. It's allowed us to be more efficient in the way that we prescribe and administer medications. It's reduced drug errors. The impact on the organisation has been huge. We've implemented it to over 80 clinical areas, including critical care and theatres. Um, this has covered over 800 beds and we've got about 3,500 users now. From a diabetes perspective, it's been a pretty exciting year. We've celebrated our one-year anniversary of the Oldham Diabetes Service, which is an integrated service. We deliver it in partnership with Pennine Care, with Pennine Acute as the lead provider organisation. Following on from that, um, Berry and HMR have decided to co-commission a similar integrated service. Again, we're doing that in partnership and we're in the implementation phase at the moment. In July 2013, we we're privileged to have the Countess of Wessex open the new neonatal unit at the Royal Oldham Hospital. Um, the unit has gone over the last few years from being a well-established local unit and it's now one of Greater Manchester's three tertiary referral units with 37 cots very high intensive care activity, caring for the smallest babies down to 23 weeks gestation from the Oldham area, from the North Manchester area and indeed from Greater Manchester and beyond. Um, when we have state-of-the-art equipment in a new purpose-built unit. Um, we've got an excellent, huge integrated team of staff including eight consultants, over 100 nurses and lots of dedicated support staff and we're working very closely together with our obstetric colleagues to make sure that all the babies born are getting the very best care. We have opened the birth centre at the Royal Oldham Hospital in the last 12 months and within that period of time we have birthed 975 women within the centre. The centre is built on an environment of the home from home. The women are encouraged to use the pools, the mats, the balls or alternative positions to aid their birth experience in a positive way. The community team are really proud that the home birth rate is 5% in the Oldham area where the national average is 1%. We want to give women true choice to birth either at home, in the birth centre or on the labour ward. If women have got choice they then have a more positive birth experience. Very proud of um, our healthcare support workers who actually won support function team of the year um, this year for the whole trust and that was to do with the work that they've done to improve um, I suppose the, uh, the children's experiences on the ward. They worked very closely with James Martin who came and actually um, helped us as a team really improve how the service we give to children at meal times. I think James had us looking at how we actually served the food, how it was prepared, and how it was made more um, appealing to the children. Stroke centralisation started five years ago in Greater Manchester where all patients eligible for thrombolysis were sent to three hyperacute stroke centres in Salford, Fairfield and Stockport. Um, this has led to an improvement in the thrombolysis figures and a reduction in length of stay across Greater Manchester. In the Pennine footprint, uh, Fairfield and Rochdale patients were already at the Fairfield site and August 2013 we moved all North Manchester patients to Fairfield and we're hoping in the next two months to move the Oldham stroke unit also to Fairfield. We will have 70 stroke beds on the Fairfield site 
offering thrombolysis services to the whole of the northeast sector of Greater Manchester. We're also offering all stroke care to the northeast sector of Greater Manchester and that by January next year we're expecting to be running a seven day service and offering stroke thrombolysis 16 hours a day. Acute stroke thrombolysis is a drug that we give to dissolve the blood clot for patients who have had a new acute stroke. One in three people can make a complete recovery from this, but the sooner you give the drug, the more brain that we save. We are really proud at Fairfield General that we've got one of the best door to needle times in the country. The national average is 62 minutes. Our average door to needle time is 38 minutes, with the best time being 17 minutes from the minute the patient arrives at our hospital to being given the injection. We've recently been refurbished um, to be a bit more dementia friendly. I'm here now in the uh, day room, um, which we've tried to make a bit more bright, breezy. There's a lot more equipment in here than what there was. It used to just be a few chairs and that was it. We've got some nice pictures on the wall to remind people of Berry, and that's where we're in. Um, also on the ward, we've um, made a bit more dementia friendly by naming the rooms after flowers and making them the same colour as them flowers. It's a bit more easier for the patients to remember. They know they're in the yellow room, the daffodil room. Um, we've also been doing some tea parties. Um, volunteers have been coming in doing the tea parties and we've been having volunteers coming in to do games and um, dominoes and card games and run just activities for them to become involved in. Um, it's a lot better now. Um, the patients seem to understand more, they seem to pick up on it, they respond better. Um, it certainly brightened up the ward. So we've tried to make our services more user friendly and we've developed the multidisciplinary insulin pump clinics across all four sites whereby patients on pump therapy have access to a consultant, a diabetes specialist nurse and a dietitian in the same consultation to ensure that they feel supported and can maintain the prescription for insulin pump therapy. Demand on the service over the last year has remained high. Um, as we know, a significant number of our patients are patients whose needs would be, would be better served by experts, especially GPs, working in the a &E department. We've been successful in recruiting really high caliber, uh, especially GPs, to work with us. Uh, these GPs will work one day a week with one of our affiliated uh, general practices and they'll be fully fledged GPs and they'll work four days a week with us here in the A&E department at North Manchester General. We believe that that will tie in primary care into secondary care and provide a very important bridge across both disciplines. We've already appointed two really high quality advanced nurse practitioners, one working in paediatrics, one working on the adult side and we've seen a transformation in the quality of care that patients are receiving as a result of this. The National Friends and Family Test was introduced into Pennine Acute Trust in April 2013 to all inpatient wards, to the A&E departments and to the Urgent Care Centre at Rochdale Infirmary. In October of 2013, Friends and Family Test was rolled out into all maternity services. We're currently working on rolling out friends and family tests into outpatients, day services and to community services. Pennine Acute Trust are extremely proud that our response rates are one of the best in the country for a trust of our size. If we look at um, mortality statistics for the last financial year, going from April 2000 to April 2014, uh, we have an HSMR of 81.2 which is really very close to the Trust corporate objective of 80. Um, and if we look at our rolling HSMR compared to other trusts within the region, we are either the second or third uh, best trust for mortality. Over the last 12 months, we've made some great progress with pressure ulcer prevention. It remains a significant priority for us in the organisation to continue to reduce avoidable pressure ulcers. Earlier this year we uh, became involved in a research study called Pressure 2 and it's a national research study looking at the effectiveness of specialist foam mattresses with alternating pressure mattresses in the prevention of pressure ulcers 
And this is a really exciting study for the Trust to be involved in, especially as they're used widely across the NHS. We've also worked with Leeds University over the last 12 months, I would say, around a new risk assessment tool for pressure ulcers. It's called Purpose T and uh, we're quite excited about it because we're going to be one of the first trusts in the UK to roll this new tool out across the organisation. Over the last 12 months we've supported our staff to mitigate a number of local incidents that may have impacted on the standard operational running of the trust and uh, assisted with maintaining business continuity. The emergency models that we've designed and implemented at Pennine Acute have received international recognition it has culminated in a number of uh, international emergency personnel attending our training courses here in Manchester uh, and we're supporting NHS England in the most recent research based uh, decontamination models with the training being filmed here at Pennine and delivered via Pennine Acute staff. I've been really fortunate in my first year to be party to several exciting initiatives. The first one has seen us invest over three million pounds in nursing numbers across many of our wards and departments and that investment has allowed us to make our ward sisters supervisory so that they can spend less time in the office doing paperwork and more time out on the wards talking to patients, their families, overseeing care and teaching and assessing the nurses of the future. On the 17th of September we launched our new nursing and midwifery strategy which we've called Three Steps to Excellence. Three Steps to Excellence is about developing nurses and midwives with the highest standards of professionalism, image and delivery of care. We've already started on that journey by the introduction of our nursing metrics across our general wards and departments. For example, nutrition, hygiene, privacy and dignity, infection control and also the most important thing of all, keeping our patients safe. 2013-14 has been another positive year for the organisation as an Aspirant Foundation Trust with over 11,000 public members and nearly 9,000 staff members. Our membership continues to grow and we compare very favourably with other established Foundation Trusts. This year looks set to be very busy on the Foundation Trust front as we will be submitting our integrated business plan to the Trust Development Authority at the end of the calendar year. We will be holding a further consultation we will be planning for a visit from the Chief Inspector of Hospitals and on the basis that we meet all our financial and clinical quality targets aiming to achieve Foundation Trust status in April 2016. I hope that you've enjoyed hearing from our staff about our exciting developments over the past year. I believe that I've joined the Trust at a time of challenge but also of great opportunity to build on our success and achievements. Since April, we have undertaken a significant amount of work in areas where I believe the Trust needs to develop and further transform in order to deliver services more effectively and efficiently to ensure that we meet our important national and local performance standards and also to ensure that the Trust is in a better position to progress and achieve Foundation Trust status in 2016. Importantly, we have developed and defined our new vision and values and our future strategic direction. This follows a huge amount of work carried out to involve our staff and to capture their views and ideas through our Pride in Pennine crowdsourcing website, which culminated in a strategy summit attended by over 300 staff. I am pleased to report that in total we received over 27,000 views, ideas and inputs from our staff. This is a tremendous achievement and I am delighted that our vision, values and strategic transformation plans are now widely available and publicly displayed across our sites and on our website. Our vision is to be a leading provider of joined up health care that will support every person who needs our services, whether in or out of hospital, to achieve their fullest health potential. This vision signals an important direction of travel in that in addition to providing excellent hospital care, we also aim to ensure that we reach into the community to provide excellent locality-based innovative services closer to patients' homes. Not every patient needs to come into hospital to receive care and wherever we provide care, it is our intention that it will be the best possible care. Importantly for me, I am proud that we are an organisation that is driven by our values. 
Our core values are that we are quality driven, responsible and compassionate. Our values determine how we as an organisation and as individuals work and the promise we make to our patients, their families, the public, our partners and to each other as colleagues. We expect to be held accountable for delivering on our promises. We will not compromise on patient safety or quality of care as we continue to work with our local NHS commissioners and partners and the voluntary sector to transform our local healthcare services to improve the outcomes for our patients. Finally, I would like to take the opportunity to thank all of our partners, our staff and the public who have supported us in the last year. I look forward to working with you all again in the coming year. Thank you.